So just coming to a comfortable seat with a nice tall spine sitting on the centres of the sitting bones. And we'll just spend a few moments with the breath. So following the breath with your full attention, each inhale, each exhale, and the little pauses in between. And then let's just make our way to a standing position to move through our sun salutations. So with an inhale, raise the hands and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come halfway up with a long flat back and exhale to your Chaturanga Dandasana, elbows in. Inhale, scoot forward as you slide onto the tops of the feet, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. With an inhale, bring the feet to the hands, come halfway up with a long flat back and exhale folds, feel that nice hamstring stretch and slowly in full control stretch yourself all the way up and exhale to standing. Good, second one. Inhale, raise the hands, exhale fold forward. Inhale, come halfway up and really lengthen, unfurl that spine and then exhale step or you might jump into your Chaturanga Dandasana, hold the weight off the mat if you can. Inhale, little back bend with low shoulders and exhale to downward facing dog. So it might be that you land a little long in your downward facing dog as I tend to do. So just step the feet forwards a tiny bit if that's the case. Working those heels down towards the ground, nice stretch in the back of the legs. But if that hamstring stretch is too much, then of course a bend in the knees is fine. Think about the spine coming out nice and long. And as always, we've got these fingers spread out wide with a whole hand pressing into the mat. Pull the tummy in. Then inhale, step or jump to bring the feet to the hands and lengthen the spine and exhale, fold. With an inhale, come up, stretch up high and exhale to standing. Great, next one then. Inhale, raise the hands, really stretch up. You could look up as well if that feels good and then exhale, sweep down, standing forward bend. Inhale, lift and lengthen and exhale, step or jump to Chaturanga Dandasana, elbows in. Inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog. And count your five breaths here. You have the option of raising the right leg. Spread the toes if you can. And try not to let that right hip roll up. So in this set of sun salutations, we're just keeping those hips level. It's kind of hard to do. Weight equal in the two hands as well. And keep the tummy button pulling back towards the spine and slow, steady breathing. Then inhale and bring the feet to the hands and exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch up and exhale to standing. Inhale, raise the hands. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen out the spine and exhale, place the hands so that you can come back into Chaturanga Dandasana and inhale to your upward facing dog. Keep those shoulders nice and low. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then we can lift the left leg. Again, the hips are level, just pointing down. Spread the toes of that lifted leg and really extend that leg out. Tummy pulls in, long spine. Shoulders sliding back away from the ears in the opposite of a shrug. Inhale, bring the feet to the hands, come halfway up with a long back and exhale, fold. Then inhale, come all the way up, stretching up high, and exhale to you standing. Good. Last one.
Okay, good stuff. Let's move along to Surnamaskar B. So bending the knees. We're going to inhale, sweep the fingertips to the mat, come to chair pose and exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, lift and lengthen through the spine and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the right foot forward, place the left heel, try and stay low as you reach up into warrior A and then hands down, foot back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog. Then inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat. Stay low as you reach up for warrior A and exhale, come back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. Any adjustments here are fine. Try and lengthen out the spine as much as you can. Slow, steady breathing as always. And then inhale, step or jump the feet to the hands, lift and lengthen through the spine and exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Inhale, lift up the hands into chair pose and exhale, straighten it. Brilliant. Let's move right along. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Don't forget to find that good hamstring stretch there. Then inhale, lift and lengthen through the spine and exhale, hold back for Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog with low shoulders. Exhale, downward facing dog. And inhale, step the right foot forward, place the left heel, reach up for warrior A, and exhale, come back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat, warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, scooping forwards for upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Five breaths. Every time you get into downward facing dog, it's a good idea just to check you've got that good position of the hands. We want to get into the habit of every time we place the hands on the mat, they're in this configuration with the fingers spread out wide and feeling like the whole hand is in contact with the mat, including right out to the fingertips. So you can press the fingertips into the floor. With the next inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lengthen the spine and exhale, fold. Then we'll bend the knees and inhale, lift up the hands so we find ourselves again in chair pose and exhale, straighten it. Good, next one. Inhale, chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot, warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot, warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. So we can raise the right leg now, but we will let the hip open up, bending the knee, dropping the foot over behind us. So you might find a nice stretch along the waist or the hip here. Again, trying to keep the weight equal in both hands. Looking out a little bit under that right arm. Brilliant. Then inhale, feet to hands, halfway up, long back. And exhale, fold down, bend the knees. Inhale, lift the hands and exhale, straighten it. Good, let's do the fourth one then. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, left foot flat, warrior. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right foot flat, warrior. Try and stay low. And exhale, come back to you, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. And the option to raise that left leg. 
bending the knee, drop the foot over and turning the left hip up, tucking the right hip under. Tummy pulls in, Adhyana Bandha, slow, steady breathing. Good. Inhale, feet to hands, halfway up, long back and exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Inhale, lift the hands and exhale, straighten up. Brilliant. Last one by yourself. Okay, well done, good stuff. So we're gonna make our way into a standing forward bend here. So we're just looking for that stretch in the hamstrings again, and we're gonna stay for a good five breaths. So just wherever you come to, the hands could rest anywhere against the legs, or it can feel quite nice to catch hold of the opposite elbow as you dangle forwards. If you have a little bit more flexibility, you might be able to hold onto the ankles or the big toes. And the traditional way of doing that big toe hold is to slide the first two fingers through in between the big toe and the next one and make a little loop by closing the thumb around. So for the second one of these we can just slide the hands underneath the feet now. You might need to bend the knees a little more to get you lower so that you can achieve that and do try and get the whole hand underneath uh, not just the fingers if possible so you're standing on the palms as well. Head nice and heavy here and if you're flexible, you might be able to start to straighten the legs a bit and find more of a hamstring stretch. Okay, good stuff. So from here, we're going to move into a standing split. So shifting the weight onto the right foot, we're just letting the left leg float into the air. So just as much or as little as you have, and it can feel helpful to walk the hands a little further forwards here so it's a little bit more like a three-legged dog so if this doesn't feel available to you at all just walk those hands out it doesn't matter if the foot's not lifting terribly high just see what you have come back take a little wiggle and then we'll have a go at that on the other side so shifting the weight onto your left foot it's the right leg that's rising up and again feel free to walk those hands as far forward as they want to be Good stuff. So we'll release and again take a little wiggle, shake anything that needs shaking and then we'll make our way into a chair pose. So bending the knees, sitting down low and lifting the arms so that the biceps are kind of in line with the ears. So a common mistake is to sort of point the hands out in front. Now we can turn into a twisted chair here, so just twisting to your right side, hooking that left elbow across, and if you want to, you can step the foot back. And another option is to open the arms, so that left arm reaches down and the right arm reaches up. Okay, 
nice and strong and straight through that back leg if you have stepped back. Now to come forward, bring the hands back to prayer pose, carefully lean the weight onto that right foot and step the leg forward. Then we'll try that twist on the other side. Remember you're welcome to stay here in twisted chair with the hands together or you could try opening them at this point or you could step back with the right leg. You can open the arms at this point if you wish. Slow, steady breathing, opening into this lovely twist. And then to come back, you need to shift the weight over the left foot and step forward lightly with the right. Then we'll just wiggle it out in a little standing forward bend. Okay, so let's step back into a downward facing dog here. And then we're just going to take a little twist. So we're reaching that left hand to the right ankle and looking out into the right arm. So just slow, steady breathing here. And try not to curl up. Really think about lengthening everything out. Push the hand into the floor and work all the way up into the shoulder, lengthen the body. So come back to down facing dog, we'll just swap that over. So reaching the right hand across to the left ankle. Looking out into that left arm. Slow, steady breathing. Don't forget to pull the tummy in as well. And then coming back to downward facing dog. Let's inhale, bring the feet to the hands, lift and lengthen through the spine and exhale, fold forward. Then inhale, come up, stretching the hands up high and exhale to standing. Okay, brilliant. So let's come to our tree pose. So bringing the weight onto the right foot, we're lifting that left leg. So the foot can come to the calf or the thigh muscle or you might keep the toes on the floor to keep your balance and reach up. Now if you've been doing this for a long time and you're very comfortable in tree pose, make it harder by looking up, looking up to the ceiling or looking up to the hands and that change in position of the head tends to really challenge the balance. You might find that it throws you out completely. So give that a little try if you want a challenge. Okay so we have the option of moving on to a half lotus here. If you don't have a half lotus Maybe stay in your tree pose, but if you do, just bringing that foot up to the opposite hip, lengthening the body out and seeing if you can fold down over that foot. If it's available, you might reach the left hand around and take hold of those toes at the back of the waist there. If there's pain in the knee, you need to come out of this posture. It means that the hip hasn't quite got enough movement to get you into this posture without kind of shearing at the knee. So always listen to what your body is saying. Okay, so making your way out, we can take those two postures on the other side. So tree pose first with the left foot on the floor and the right foot lifting. Remember, we're just looking for that external rotation of the hips. So encourage that knee to open out to the side. And then we can bring the hands up and maybe look up for an extra challenge to the balance. One of the tips in balanced poses is to try and keep the middle of the body nice and still. And we can do that by pulling the tummy in and just generally building strength there. So you're either staying in your tree pose or you're coming to the half lotus by just adjusting the position of that foot. So the heel is coming up in front of the standing leg and then folding forward. And then just gently making your way out, coming back to standing and shaking anything that needs a little shake. And then we're going to step out wide, turn those toes out. We're going to do a goddess squat. So bending the elbows, flexing the wrists, try and keep the body upright. We're going to sit as low as we can and then exhale, sit a little lower. Inhale, come back to where you started. So not straightening the legs, but just going from a squat into a deeper squat. So let's do five of those nice and slow and steady. So hopefully feeling those thigh muscles working and then we'll come back into a static 
version. So really pushing up with those hands quite hard as if you're carrying two heavy plates of fruit there. And then release. All right, good stuff. Let's take our wide leg standing forward bends here. Toes pointing forwards now. We're looking for a nice straight spine. Scooping that tummy in. The hands can walk back in between the feet. Squeeze the elbows in towards one another and press those hands at the floor. With the inhale, draw yourself up, taking a nice stretch up with those hands and then exhale, hands onto hips. Inhale, lift the chest and exhale, come forwards again, looking for that straight back. You should feel those hip bones come down towards the thighs. Trying to hold the back out straight and draw those shoulders back away from the ears. Opposite of a shrug, keep the tummy pulled in. And notice the weight in the feet, so it's not just in the heels. Use the whole of the foot to bear your weight. Keep that breathing slow and steady. And then with the next inhale, draw yourself up and stretch the hands up high. So the next one of these is with a clasp of the hands. We lift the chest and exhale, fold forwards. Trying to keep the back straight. The shoulders might twizzle in their sockets a little bit as the arms lift up. But try, try not to force that. Just let that sort of be whatever it is. That's fine. Pulling that tummy and lengthening the spine, keeping the weight into the balls and toes of the feet as well as the heels. And then inhale, come up, stretch the hands up high and exhale, bring those hands onto the front of the thighs. So we're going to do the twist here. So you might need a slightly narrower stance. So come down and then cross the arm so the left arm is at the front and then you're turning clockwise and looking out under that left arm now you might might want to change the position of that right hand holding on to that outer edge of the ankle to nudge you further into the twist if you want to Let's bring that twist around to the other side then. So it's the right arm that's going to come in front and then we're going to turn anti-clockwise so we're looking out under that right arm. And just explore what you have in this twist. If you're beginning, it might not be too much. It's just something that we explore our way into over time. It's absolutely fine. So try not to pull or push too hard. Just try and keep lengthening the body nice, slow, steady breathing. And then we can step out and into a downward facing dog. So it's time for our plank challenge. May now we're doing seven breaths on each of these. So let's start with the left hand on the floor and the right hand reaching up. Feet stacked and using all your strength to hold your body in a straight line. Now, if this is not available to you, you can just step that top foot over a little bit. That will make you more stable. And the more stable the posture is, the less work you have to do to maintain it. So that will make it a little bit easier. But we are working towards finding this position with the feet stacked as we get stronger. So we can shift into middle plank now. Do remember that you're welcome to take all of these on the elbows rather than the straight arms if you prefer. Again, looking for long straight lines through the body and the legs. Slow, steady breathing, counting those breaths for seven. And then we can switch it to the other side with the right hand on the floor. Left hand reaching up. Long body, long legs, feet stacked. I'm feeling this in the oblique, the side waist. Good stuff. 
and then we'll make our way out and into a child's pose for a little rest. And then we'll make our way into a downward facing dog. Well done. All right, so from here, let's step forward with our right foot and really get low with the hips towards the ground. So that right foot is staying flat on the floor and we are allowing the knee to drop as far forward as we want to, it to be. And the hands are just supporting us on the floor and we're extending that left leg back. Now if you want to increase this stretch, then bend the knee of that back leg, the left leg, take the foot and squeeze it in towards the bottom. Keep dropping low towards the ground through the hips. Slow, steady breathing. Good stuff. Let's make our way out and back to downward facing dog. And then we'll take those on the other side. So stepping the left foot as far forwards as you can. Fit flat on the floor, so keep the heel down, drop the knee over and slide that right knee back. So dropping through the hip. If you want to, you can bend that right knee, taking hold of the foot and squeezing it in towards the bottom, but try and keep dropping through the hips. Hopefully you'll find a stretch over the hip flexor and also into the quad muscle in that stretch. All right, good stuff. So once again, let's make our way back into downward facing dog. And if it feels good, you could take a little wrist stretch there. Okay, we're going to have a go at our crow pose. So tucking the knees up against the back of the triceps, we're shifting the weight forwards and just seeing whether the toes want to lighten on the floor. If you've been doing this a while, then try and work towards having straight arms. Okay, stepping back to downward facing dog, have a little wiggle. And then we're just going to take a little wrist stretch before we come into a squat twist and then a side crow. So in this twist, you just want to be crouching on your toes with the knees bent. And then we're just going to turn around to our right hand side. And a little bit like in the Mary Chastner postures that we did before, you're trying to rotate that left shoulder in its socket and bind that left knee, bringing the right hand behind you. So you're looking out to the right hand side in a little twist. And then from there, we can find our side crow. So the left elbow pokes into the fold at the knee, the right elbow into the top of the thigh. And again, we're just trying to lean, holding that shape. So let's try those on the other side, turning to the left in your squat and just seeing whether you might find that little bind reaching behind with that right arm and then seeing if the left fingers can find the right fingers. And then having got a little bit of a twist in there, you could have a go at the side crow. So both hands on the floor to your left hand side, fingers pointing away to the long edge of the mat. We're just curling up into a little shape, leaning over, trying to find that balance. If you've been doing this a while, think about getting the sensation of lifting the knees off the elbow, lightening there by strength in the core. Okay, good stuff. Let's take a little rest in child's pose for a moment. So we'll do those Mary Chastana postures now that I mentioned before. So sitting up tall with the left leg straight, we're just bending that right knee and we're leaning forward past that knee. So make sure the foot isn't right against the inside of the left leg, but you've got a little bit of space to lean forward. We're rolling that shoulder over in its socket and just seeing if you can catch the top of the knee as you reach that right arm around behind the back. And then with the left hand, see if you can make the bind. Once you're in here, we want to try and keep a straight back. So don't curl up too much. Pull the tummy in and slow, steady breathing. So 
So for Marichasana B, you're either just going to bend that left leg and place the foot on the ground behind the right foot, or if you're going for the half lotus, you need to straighten that right leg, place the left foot into a half lotus position, and then bring that right leg back in. Then we're looking for the bind as before. So with the right armpit hugging that right knee close to the body and the left arm reaching around. And then we're folding forwards with as long a back as we can. So a nice curled up introverted little posture. So we're going to have a go at Mary Chastner. See, I filmed this very early one morning and my Mary Chastner seat is a bit rubbish. <laughs> it's just got our bed a little bit stiff. So turning to that right side, we are extending that left arm around the top of the knee. I'm just going to have another try at that one because that really didn't work. So bending that right knee up, getting that nice twist and hunkering forwards a little bit to try and get that left arm into the right position. So with the armpit passing over the top of the knee and then reaching the hands around behind and then working on sitting up tall as you turn into your twist. It's a challenging pose for me, this one. Still a work in progress. So slow, steady breathing. And then we'll just have a go at those three on the other side. So Marichyasana A, left foot in, left arm reaches round for the bind, right hand finds the fingers. So if you don't make the bind on any of these, just rest the hands wherever they come to, that's totally fine. Try and lengthen the spine, pull the tummy in, listen to the slow, steady breathing. So remember, if you're taking the modified version of Mary Charles and the B, you don't need to undo the posture. You just need to bring that right foot behind the left one. If you're coming into the half lotus, then you need to undo the posture, find that half lotus, and then bend that left leg again. You want to kind of come onto the front parts of the sitting bone so that knee can rest on the floor. That half lotus leg can come down. So you don't want it up here like this. We want to have that knee resting on the floor, nice and supported. Then we're hugging that other knee close to the body to find the bind, reaching around with that left arm and finding the fingers with the right. I just love curling up in this pose, hiding away. All right, good stuff. Let's see how Mary Chastana C is on this side. So with the left knee bent, I'm just going to nudge it a little bit over the midline and find my twist, first of all. And then I'm going to hunker forward, turn that shoulder over in its socket and see if I can have that knee right close into the armpit as I reach that hand around. And I'm looking for the fingers. And then once I find the bind, just about, I work into sitting up as tall as I can in this twist. Slow, steady breathing. Any pain in the spine, you just want to come out. If this is too much of a twist, try not to force that bind really. Just need to be a little bit careful. Okay, let's come out and have a little wiggle. And we can just take a nice seated forward bend. So wherever you come to in this one, you don't have to hold the toes at all. The hands can rest anywhere on the legs or beside the legs on the ground. Again, tilting the pelvis over so the hip bones fold towards the sides and holding the back out nice and straight. Slow, steady breathing. Okay, good stuff. So from here, let's just make our way into a nice gentle inversion. So lying down with the spine long on the ground, we'll let the feet float into the air. It can feel quite nice to send the arms overhead, perhaps holding onto the elbows. 
So you could stay here or if you want to roll on up into a shoulder stand then you could do that. So just beginning to roll the hips away from the floor and walking the hands down either side of the spine in the direction of the shoulder blades. We're trying to prop our body up into a vertical line while tucking the shoulders underneath and trying to get the elbows to come in closer to one another. And once you're in, you might change the position of the hands slightly to hold on around the sort of the sides of the rib cage and lift yourself up just a little bit. That can help with the alignment of the posture. And just find your way into a vertical line a little bit more. Lots of options from here. You could drop the feet over and find a plow pose. You could hug the feet as I am just there or you could bring the hands along the mat behind you and interlace the fingers. Entirely up to you. And then whenever you feel ready, you can begin to very gently roll your way down. You might even get some nice little clicks in the spine. I sometimes do as I roll down. Okay, we'll come into a passive twist. So let's just send the knees over to the right hand side and turn the upper body a little bit away to the left hand side. Just resting here. Notice if there are any muscles working and just see if you can let them release. And then we'll take that twist over to the other side. So just drop those knees over to the left and turn the upper body away to the right. We're aiming to have the backs of both shoulders on the ground here. And then rolling your way out, giving those knees a little hug. And we're just going to come into a back bend. So peeling the hips up away from the mat and the vertebra and just see how high you want to come with this. You might take a very little gentle baby back bend. You might come a little higher and come up onto the musculature of the shoulders. The hands could come under the rib cage or they could clasp together on the mat. Or if you have a full wheel, you could start instead with the hands in between the ears and the shoulders and press all the way up. Whenever you're ready, begin to make your way down and take a counter pose by hugging the knees into the chest. And then we can make our way into Shavasana. So you can lie however you like. You might have the knees bent and resting in towards one another. That can let you have the whole spine in contact with the mat. Or you might lie in the traditional Shavasana pose, which is arms and legs straight, feet falling out to the side, palms turned upwards, with the arms and legs a little bit open away from the midline. So here we just let the breath do whatever it wants to do. Softening, becoming fainter perhaps, slower, just whatever's going on, we're not controlling it. And just try to count the breath in groups of five. So you say the number to yourself as you exhale. And any time you lose count, just come back to starting from number one. And this is just a really nice way to stay focused on the breath and very mindful kind of practice. It's also quite insightful sometimes when we begin this practice. We don't make it to breath number five even once <laughs> without our minds wandering away. And that's fine, that's normal. But it's just quite nice to notice that as we progress with our yoga, with our mindful practice, we become more able to place our concentration and keep it there.
So just taking the last few minutes of this practice to take rest and count the breath. 